All right, this time we're actually starting off, and we get we starting off with two L's. I know that two I pieces is impossible in vanilla, but I'm not sure about two L pieces in a row. Hmm. It's amazing all of the things that you know are possible, aren't possible, and the extent to which that's you know by design or just by programming quirks. Yeah. The game's randomizer definitely giveth and definitely taketh away. I feel like we see a little bit more of the taking away uh, if we're averaging things out. We'll but. see. Oh, and Oops starting off with a little bit of a high stack. He covered as well there for a bit. Oh, and oh, that's going to be... top out. 5,000 points. Dan Sushi's already good. All right. Incrementing the seeds, getting ready yep. for the next round. However they want to do it is fine. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, Tetris. All right. And we're starting off again. So I feel like that the building up the left as aggressively as possible first... No, this is definitely the very traditional classic styling. Yeah. Oh, and Oop oh. with a misdrop there. Yeah, looks like it. Looks like it's gonna get out of that just fine. No, there's definitely uh, ha having having it built out early enough. Yeah. You don't. You... Specifically, I think the best part about building out the left is just avoiding dependencies. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like, if you have one side built out, then it's kind of hard to explain, but you should ideally have kind of a sloping stack. Mm -hmm. Keep slope alive. Yeah. What you don't want is a very, very jagged stack, because then you'd have LJ dependencies and eyepiece dependencies. The, the ideal stack uh, for accommodation is you want alternating you know, one deep and alternating one or two wide in terms of the... Mm. Placements. That's what I, yeah. you know, you try and keep as flat as you can. Yeah. But you don't want to. You don't want You don't want deep valleys. You ideally want. You ideally want nine columns to be full, one column to be open on the right. But in a pinch, eight columns and two open on the right is good as well. And I guess we don't need to give score checks because they can't hear us. <laughs> but anyway, Oop at 122,000 and Dan Sushi at 104,000. They are at about the same line count and they are about at the same pace. Although Oop may be about a Tetris ahead. Opening that lead. So I was asking earlier about the, the, the Honda Cup from a, t a tournament perspective, like the quality of life improvements uh, in terms of like automating the count, uh, the, the count for the chase down sequences and just other in terms of just, you know, less setup required. Yeah. Uh, than, you know, the you know, Tetris gym, synchronizing the seeds. Yeah. All of that. Although I will say that there's one big drawback. It's that the game feels less responsive because mm -hmm. there's more input lag and potentially... Another factor is that if you use a bad NES controller adapter, because we like to play with NES controllers, then mm. you could potentially have a worse gaming experience, because I'm going to get kind of technical, but like the polling rate of some NES adapters is not fast enough to keep up with rolling. That makes sense. But if you don't care about any of that, if you're just going to be playing some DAS friendlies or something like that, yeah, Tetris Effect Connected. Great way to streamline the setup process. It's just a shame, because most of the issues are just inherent to the PC platform. Uh, it, it, it's amazing the ways that technology that is uh, this th this old still manages to have some concrete advantages in some cases. Yeah. A uh, little bit high on both sides of the play field, both for Dan and uh, yeah. Oop getting a bit spiry, but Dan bringing it down. Yeah. And Dan is now a Tetris head. We flipped in the pace. Really nice to see uh, that consistency working out. 
Yeah. And you were saying earlier you are hoping that we see Dance first max out. Well, ideally, what you want is 400,000 points at about 100 lines or mm -hmm. higher. And yep. Dan, not quite on pace to achieve that because he's going to be burning for a little bit, but pretty close. Well, it's definitely, definitely within reach. We'll, we'll need, we'll need an impressive post game, post transition game. So, what, what has, uh, in, in, in your experience, the scene settled around, uh, you know, twenty nine, you know, no longer being effectively a kill screen in the high levels of competitive play? Is the term second transition? Uh, really sticking around? It really depends on who's commentating, honestly. Like, it could be second transition, it could be kill screen, thrill screen. I like thrill screen. Yeah, this is game two. Mm -hmm. But realistically, I think everybody is okay. Like, people realize that this is the natural progression of the game. I think the CQWC 2022 finals showed that very, very well. Mm-hmm. The natural progression of the game is ending at 39, because, well, it's always ended. <laughs> I, I, I mean, oh, the, the, oh. the way that... Uh, oh, Dan Sushi, a little oh. bit of a misdrop there. Let's see if he can get out of this. Oh, oh he hangs that that's long a hang. bar, man. Who is good? So, yeah, oop. Oops, we are got currently 1-1. One, one. All right, and both players are currently changing the seeds. Until we end up in uh, situations Three, where... Two, one. And getting started just like that. Yeah, thir 39 makes sense until we end up, you know, crashing in competitions, but... <laughs> well, this is actually something that's been discussed. Should we keep 39 as the cap until players are good enough to consistently reach 39 and bump it up to 49? Or should we just always have 39 as the cap? It's, yeah, it's a controversial question, but I think most people agree that we should just stay at 39 no matter what. Uh, that's... That's that's feeling right. I mean, we, we need to get, you know, Scout and Mar from on with the statistics to... Yeah, you know, to really... To, to, to come up with a, a fully grounded answer, but... Yeah, about whether or not players are consistently reaching 39. Because... Mm -hmm. The thing is, in order for you... In order for a game to go to 39, both players have to reach level 39. So if one player tops out early, the other player could have potentially gone to 39, but... They didn't, because their opponent topped out, and thus they didn't have reason to keep playing if they'd already won. Right. So that's the reason that we have the whole match database, because... Yeah. Being able to calculate the, uh, the, the, the fair median score, where you start yeah. being able to take out the reasons. Yeah. And also calculating, like the, n like, the number of games that have reached 39 that actually could have gone to 39 that weren't hampered by an opponent's top out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hundred thousand point lead for, yeah, for Dan Sushi, Dan Sushi. And, and very Luke strong stack play. Spiring up right now. Let's see if he can get a bar over. No, he can't. And that's gonna be a top out. Dan Sushi is good. All right, and game three goes to Dan. The uh, as you said, we we had potentially five three, more games with two, Dan, and uh, here we go. Here we go again. Yep. Yeah, starting off this game here, it looks like neither player has scored a Tetris just yet, although... Oops, Wells currently open, gets the bar, and gets the first Tetris of this match. And Dan Sushi looking to match that once he gets a bar of his own. Mm -hmm. And boom, Tetris for Dan. So, uh, occasionally it seems to happen uh, by, 
by accident, but occasionally it all seems to be planned, where I'll see players maintaining a stack that is deliberately eight wide rather than nine wide. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to ask if you had perspective on like, is that is that easier to maintain in some cases where you're doing like the the very double wide well? Uh, it depends. It's mostly just circumstantial. Like, am I going to be am I getting the pieces for the eight wide well? Because the eight wide well with a couple of burns can easily be converted into the nine wide well. Because mm -hmm. like, if you're burning pieces that are three and one, mm -hmm. so like T, L, and J, then you can easily just get two more rows in the. You can easily just get two more rows of the nine wide well. Right, and I, I've I've seen it happen a couple times with the two piece setup to get Tetris ready yeah. from the eight wide. Dan Sushi open for business. Still waiting. Ooh, covers as well there. Ooh, getting into the shelf situation. Yeah, but it's pretty all right. Stack isn't really dangerously high. This is pretty much just expected. Like, sometimes you just gotta cover the well. And not really in any danger yet of losing his lead. Too. Mm -hmm. Oop is pouring them on, and this is about a. It's not a. It's, a. it's a little bit of a low bar game. 14. 15 bars now. Most other pieces in the 20s. Yeah. Not a massive suffer game, but not 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 the bounty we have some we have seen in some matches today. Speaking of bounty, Tetris is trading back and forth. Yep. Dan ready for another. Yeah, neither player is really on max out pace. Dan Sushi might be approaching it, but he's not... I don't think he's quite going to have 300,000 points by 75 lines. And meanwhile, Oop is, like, about a Tetris behind Dan, so... I mean, it, it's definitely possible to get there if they can keep up the aggression, but still... Still just solid. Yeah. Solid gains from both players, considering the circumstances. Another score check, it appears that Oop has sort of fallen a little bit behind Dan Sushi. He's been burning a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So. 60,000 points, three Tetrises or so? Yeah, about that. Mm -hmm. They're uh, almost on the exact same pieces at this point. Yeah, Dan Sushi with a little misdrop there, that'll probably cause him to cover. Well, nope, actually gets a Tetris. But yeah, he does have some garbage on the bottom of his stack, so this could be Oop's chance to catch up, depending on how things play out. Uh, D D Dan has been very good about maintaining Tetris ready and keeping the well open aggressively. I mean, we'll yeah. see. We'll see how the. We'll see how much he actually loses in this dig, but not looking like it's going to be too much. Oh wow, Oop actually made up a lot of ground. Yeah, Oop is currently about. You know what? They're about even in pace. So yeah, this game could go either way now. We have the transition to level 19 in 20 lines, where, as you've probably seen by now, the speed gets about 50% faster. So that is really the make-or-break speed for this game. Mm -hmm. And bo both of these players certainly have uh, the strong level 19 ability. Oop uh, having, oh, I, I think, 1.2 per PB. Uh, uh, and Dan in the 900Ks. It's going to be 400, 47, 4, 460 some odd transition, yeah, probably. 435 transition for Oop. And next Tetris will be transition for Dan Sushi, which is probably going to be about 465. 467? Yeah, 467. 
really clean board going into transition, which can be as or more important than your score. And oh, that's and a top out for Roop. And there we go. Yeah, there we go. Dan Sushi on his way in. And Eric, good luck. Coming up next, we have the winner's finals with Eric ICX versus Opox. And then uh, the victor of this will be facing Dan, having just clawed his way back up through the loser's bracket. Show of excellent sportsmanship on behalf uh, of uh, of Dan of Dan and Oop. What a what an exciting game we've had, and Dan has been making a, a relatively deep run. We're going to see after facing the losers, uh, the the, uh, the winner of the winners finals, exactly how this plays out. Am I going to get Dan back in commentary? I will see if I can fetch him. Much appreciated. It's awesome to have. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to debrief on some of those games as well. Okay, we are going to get Dan back on commentary. Take care, take care. <laughs> <laughs>